You're listening to the Weekly Bible Lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. This is the lesson for Sunday, March 6, 2022. Subject, Man. The Golden Text, Psalms. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. The response of reading Isaiah. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places, and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry land springs of water, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. The Bible Daniel O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea, be strong. Psalms The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Second Chronicles Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah, and encamped against the fenced cities, and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city. And they did help him. 
and he set captains of war over the people, and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city, and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jews' speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall, to affright them, and to trouble them, that they might take the city. And for this cause Hezekiah the king, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor, and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. Psalm Be merciful unto me, O God. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Mark The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will, be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Luke Fear not, little flock, 
for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Philippians Therefore, my brethren dearly beloved and long for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Rejoice in the Lord alway, and again I say, Rejoice. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. I shall now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Christian scientific practice begins with Christ's keynote of harmony, Be Not Afraid. Japhet, Noah's son, a type of spiritual peace, flowing from the understanding that God is the divine principle of all existence, and that man is his idea, the child of his care. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Love, redolent with unselfishness, bathes all in beauty and light. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect, in glorified quality, the infinite Father-Mother God. God made man in his own image to reflect the divine spirit. Continuing our definition of man, let us remember that harmonious and immortal man has existed forever and is always beyond and above the mortal illusion of any life, substance, and intelligence as existent in matter. This statement is based on fact, not fable. Man is incapable of sin, sickness, and death. The real man cannot depart from holiness, nor can God, by whom man is evolved, engender the capacity or freedom to sin. Sickness, sin, and death are not the fruits of life. They are inharmonies which truth destroys. Perfection does not animate imperfection. Inasmuch as God is good and the fount of all being, he does not produce moral or physical deformity. Therefore, such deformity is not real but is illusion, the mirage of error. 
divine science reveals these grand facts. On their basis, Jesus demonstrated life, never fearing nor obeying error in any form. Fear never stopped being and its action. The blood, heart, lungs, brain, etc. have nothing to do with life, God. Every function of the real man is governed by the divine mind. The human mind has no power to kill or to cure, and it has no control over God's man. The divine mind that made man maintains his own image and likeness. The human mind is opposed to God and must be put off, as St. Paul declares. All that really exists is the divine mind and its idea, and in this mind the entire being is found harmonious and eternal. The straight and narrow way is to see and acknowledge this fact, yield to this power, and follow the leadings of truth. That mortal mind claims to govern every organ of the mortal body, we have overwhelming proof. But this so-called mind is a myth and must, by its own consent, yield to truth. It would wield the scepter of a monarch, but it is powerless. The immortal divine mind takes away all its supposed sovereignty, and saves mortal mind from itself. The Physical Effects of Fear illustrate its illusion. Gazing at a chained lion crouched for a spring should not terrify a man. The body is affected only with the belief of disease produced by a so-called mind ignorant of the truth which chains disease. Nothing but the power of truth can prevent the fear of error and prove man's dominion over error. Nothing is more disheartening than to believe that there is a power opposite to God, or good, and that God endows this opposing power with strength to be used against himself, against life, health, harmony. Every law of matter or the body supposed to govern man is rendered null and void by the law of life, God. Ignorant of our God-given rights, we submit to unjust decrees, and the bias of education enforces this slavery. Be no more willing to suffer the illusion that you are sick or that some disease is developing in the system than you are to yield to a sinful temptation on the ground that sin has its necessities. When infringing some supposed law, you say that there is danger. This fear is the danger and induces the physical effects. We cannot in reality suffer from breaking anything except a moral or spiritual law. The so-called laws of mortal belief are destroyed by the understanding that soul is immortal and that mortal mind cannot legislate the times, periods, and types of disease with which mortals die. God is the lawmaker, but he is not the author of barbarous codes. In infinite life and love, 
there is no sickness, sin, nor death. And the scriptures declare that we live, move, and have our being in the infinite God. Consciousness constructs a better body when faith in matter has been conquered. Correct material belief by spiritual understanding, and spirit will form you anew. You will never fear again except to offend God, and you will never believe that heart or any portion of the body can destroy you. When the first symptoms of disease appear, dispute the testimony of the material senses with divine science. Let your higher sense of justice destroy the false process of mortal opinions which you name law, and then you will not be confined to a sick room nor laid upon a bed of suffering in payment of the last farthing, the last penalty demanded by error. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him. Suffer no claim of sin or of sickness to grow upon the thought. Meet the incipient stages of disease with as powerful mental opposition as a legislator would employ to defeat the passage of an inhuman law. Rise in the conscious strength of the spirit of truth to overthrow the plea of mortal mind, alias matter, arrayed against the supremacy of spirit. Blot out the images of mortal thought and its beliefs in sickness and sin. Let neither fear nor doubt overshadow your clear sense and calm trust that the recognition of life harmonious, as life eternally is, can destroy any painful sense of, or belief in, that which life is not. Let Christian science, instead of corporeal sense, support your understanding of being, and this understanding will supplant error with truth, replace mortality with immortality, and silence discord with harmony. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This truth is Christian science. I will now read the three daily duties from the Church Manual by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this church to pray each day, Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A rule for motives and acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, 
influencing or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to duty. It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged and justified or condemned. And from Science and Health, Christian scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you, either when asleep or when awake. This lesson is provided by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of citations from the King James Bible and from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, 1910 edition, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.